Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to take a look at calculating the area of a sector. As always it is geared towards A-level maths courses but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also so hopefully you find the video useful. Okay so we're going to look at the area of a sector and here we have a circle and uh, this part here which looks a little bit like a pizza slice is what we would call a minor sector so it's the smaller sector and then the larger part is what we call the major sector so we're going to derive the formula now for how we might find the area of a sector using radians first of all we're going to consider the area of a circle so the area of a circle is normally found by doing pi times radius squared so the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. Now if I wanted to calculate the sector, we would, ver we would do it very similar to how we uh, calculated the length of an arc. So if I wanted the area of a sector, I'm going to call it A with a little subscript, subscript S. So the area of a sector is found normally by doing pi times radius squared. And suppose we knew this angle in here, theta, we would multiply by the angle over 360 degrees because that's the proportion of the circle that we're looking for the area of now how does this translate into dealing with radians well we know that 360 degrees is 2 pi so the area of a sector can be written as pi times radius squared times theta over 2 pi and then what we can do is we can cancel out the pi with the pi and that leaves us with this more conventional formula which is going to be a half times radius squared times theta and that's where theta is in radians and this is the formula that we need to calculate the area of a sector let's take a look at a quick example here I've got a sector and I've got the angle given in radian measure and I want the area so the area of this sector is going to be found by doing a half times 50 squared times pi over 3. So 50 squared um, is going to be 2,500 times that by a half is going to give me 1,250 times by pi over 3. And we're going to type this into our calculator. So we do 1, 2, 5, 0 times pi over 3. So we get an answer such as this. I'm going to write it to, um, let's go to three significant figures. So it's going to be 1,310. And that's how we calculate the area of a sector. Now that's a fairly straightforward question. You may have to work backwards and calculate a radius. We're going to move on now and take a look at a segment and see how we might find the area of a segment. So this region here is what we call a segment. And if I, if I think about it geometrically, the segment, the segment, is in fact equal to the sector so the sector take away the triangle here so to see this triangle if I take that away from the sector we're going to be left with this segment so let's see if we can work out a formula for calculating the area of a segment well we've already worked out that the area of a sector is a half times r squared times theta and what's the area of this triangle here well we're gonna have to use a little bit of trigonometry from before so if that's a radius r and this is also a radius r and that's theta the area of a triangle can be found by doing half the product of the sides times by the sine of the angle in between so if I do a half the product of the sides, r times r is r squared, by the sine of the angle. So half ab sine c. 
is the conventional formula. We're just putting it in terms of r and theta. So a half r squared sine theta. Now, what can we factor out of both terms? I can factor out a half r squared. And what does that leave me with? We get theta minus sine of theta. And there's a lovely little formula to help us work out the area of a segment. Right, now we're going to look at a fairly meaty question here where we're asked to calculate or to show that the area of the shaded region is a squared cosine theta times sine theta minus cosine theta. So it looks like a bit of a horrific question. But if we think about what we've just done, if I was to be able to calculate the area of this triangle here and calculate the area of the sector, and if I took the area of the sector away from the area of the triangle, I should get this expression here. So let's work towards calculating the area of this triangle here. I'm going to start by considering this triangle here, O, C, M. So if I consider this triangle, what I would like to know is I'd like to know how long is its base, how long is its height. If I know the base and I know the height, then I can calculate the area. So let's see if we can use trigonometry to work out the length of the base. So CM. Well, we should notice that this is a right angle triangle. OCM is a right angle triangle. So in relation to this angle here, this is what we would call the opposite side. And in relation to this angle here, and in relation to the triangle, this side, CO, is equal to A. And that's our hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse has a length of A, and the other side has a length of O. We're not sure what that is. So CM is, is the opposite side. The hypotenuse is equal to A. And we got theta. Can we think of a trigonometric expression that involves O and A? Hopefully you know that's the sine of the angle. So sine of theta is going to equal the opposite. This is what the opposite is. We'll call it CM. So the opposite side is CM over the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse has a length of A. So, that means that A times sine of theta is going to equal CM, which is our base. So I now know the base of the triangle CM. I would also like the height of the triangle. Now I'm going to get rid of this O, just to make life a little bit easier. The hypotenuse is going to stay the same. Now I've got to think, in relation to the angle here, the height, the height is actually the adjacent side. So now let's see if we can work out the height in terms of, well, using trigonometry. So, um, what shall we call the height? Let's call the height big H. Big H. In fact, it's let's just call it OM. OM is the height. So, OM is going to equal the, in relation to the angle, it's the adjacent side. It's the adjacent side. And um, in relation to the angle, we're still dealing with the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is going to equal A. Well, this is not helping. A, D, J, I'm going to write. So, <coughs> in relation to the angle, OM is the adjacent side, and H has a length of A. The hypotenuse has a length of A. Let's see if we can link them using trigonometry. That means that, well, we know that the cosine uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So cosine of the angle theta equals the adjacent, ADJ, over the hypotenuse, which is called A. I'm going to change the adjacent to... OM, because this is getting a wee bit confused. I'm going to call it OM. My students will be delighted that I'm using the word 
we they've been asking me for a shout out for some time there they go anyway om so the adjacent we're changing actually back to om and i'm going to call this hypotenuse a so om over a is the cosine of the angle cross multiply so multiply both sides by a a times the cosine of theta is going to equal om and om is the height okay wonderful now in fact if we were to think about this carefully if i had the perpendicular height which we've just calculated and i also know if i was to know this whole distance here cd i could work out the area of the whole triangle because this is a base this is a perpendicular height here so we could do the base times by the perpendicular height well that's what we're going to do if if cm which we've calculated has the value um where are we cm has this a sine theta well cd cd must be two times a sine theta so in fact we've got the base of the whole triangle so two times a sine theta is cd okay so we got the base of the triangle we've got the height of the triangle let's work out the area the area of the triangle is going to equal half times by the base which is 2a sine theta times by the height which is a cos theta okay tidying up the half and the two cancel out a times a is a squared and we get sine theta cos theta okay let's actually tidy this up a squared sine theta cos theta okay so that's the area of our little triangle well our considerably big triangle okay so we got the area of the triangle now we want the area of the sector okay so i'm going to need the angle and i need the radius the angle the angle must be two theta so the the total angle equals two theta so the angle is two theta and we also need we need the radius well the radius is the same as om so we need the radius which is om the angle is two theta two theta and the radius is om we've worked that out earlier which is the same as the height it's a cos theta okay the area of a sector so the area of the sector in fact let's use a little notation we did earlier so a with a little s here so area of the sector is going to equal a half times r squared times theta which is going to be a half times r squared so a cos theta squared a cos theta squared times by theta okay so we get a half a squared so we got a times cos theta if i square that we're going to get a squared cos squared theta And in fact, I'm going to times that by theta as well. I'm going to move that guy in here. So a half theta a squared cos theta cos squared theta. Right now, we said earlier on that to work out the total area of the shaded region, we needed to do the area of the triangle take away the area of the sector. So we got the area of the triangle, uh, which is up here. That's the area of the triangle here. So we need to do area to triangle take away area of sector so the shaded region is going to be the area of the triangle a squared sine theta 
cos theta take away the area of the triangle a half theta a squared cos squared theta okay now we're gonna have to work a little magic on this and see if we can tidy it up let's see well we can certainly factor out an a squared is there anything else we can that's common to both i can factor out a cos theta so if i factor out a squared cos theta what does that leave me with well i'm still going to have sine theta here and i'm still going to have a half cos theta and is there anything else we can do with that i'm not too sure let's see what we were asked for we were asked for a squared cos theta sine theta minus cos theta right we got the a squared cos theta sine theta minus cos theta okay so i just had a, a quick look at this there's actually a little mistake i've made i'm going to amend it now we should have done a half r squared theta now the angle was not actually one theta the angle at the center should have been two theta i wasn't careful about that i forgot that the angle was two theta so it's a half r squared the angle should be two theta which means that we get a half times um that's r squared and that should be by two theta which makes this um times by two as well so the two should cancel out with the half to give us this which means that the half is gone here which means that the half is gone here which gives us a squared cos theta times sine theta minus cos theta which is exactly what we were looking for okay hopefully you found that video useful we'll be back again with another one soon all the best good luck with the revision and take it easy